Welcome everybody. Welcome to That Word Chat Live. Uh, well, we're always live, but we're on Zoom Live, and this is great to have a, an audience here. We're doing, as you can see, we're doing some video recording. We're simultaneously uh, broadcasting this to over 200 people on Zoom, listening in with great interest to see what the cool people at ACES are doing. Um, it, don't feel free, even this is, a, this is a studio setup, you don't have to be quiet. If there's something you love, you can applaud. If there's something you hate, you can boo. Um, <laughs> Hopefully you'll applaud more than boo. Russell Harper is a uh, principal revisor of the new Chicago Manual of Style, which is coming out with a new edition. And really, we're hearing this all for the first time. Uh, most people don't even, haven't even heard there's a new edition coming out. Uh, but we've got Russell Harper here to tell us, give us a sneak look at what's in it. Uh, Russell, you've, you've, uh, you've been principal revisor. This is like your third book? Yeah, it's my third. I started with the 16th, uh, which came out in 2010. 2010, so okay. So, um, so where are we right now in the process of, uh, of the book? The, the... Um, we have a lot of work to do. Okay. <laughs> um, because it's a, a, a book and a website, and, and the website is um, you know, uh, developed and maintained and um, yeah, in-house. So mm -hmm. uh, the, everybody works together from editorial to marketing to IT to you know, the whole thing. And so in order to make sure that that releases in time for the book, which of course the book is a PDF file mm -hmm. and that's easier. So when that's done, <laughs> we will be referring to that often, um, the yet to be released book, um, to make sure that the website um, version reflects the content accurately and it doesn't distort anything. Right, right, yeah. Do you, so do you, have you, uh, in the revising process, so do you pretty much know what is gonna be different in the new book at this point? Oh yeah. yeah, that's all settled now. Oh, it's all settled, yes. okay, excellent, excellent. Yeah. All right. I, um, almost all, there might be a last minute like, oh, okay, or, or a sig very significant change of some sort in the world, extremely significant that yeah. could still sneak in, right. maybe, but um, pretty much the content has been decided. So AP, uh, AP Stylebook editors, editor Paula Froke was here this morning and she told us about changes in the AP Stylebook, which I assume um, you know, there, there seems to be this, you know, this, this divide, but I'm sure you enjoy looking at that book and taking advice from that book. Is um, One thing that, that struck me that I think the, the Merriam-Webster announcement that Merriam-Webster, like Chicago, is going to be uh, the main dictionary for AP style book. Um, that's interesting. The thing that I think is probably going to reverberate the most is unique being not necessarily a singular, but you could be in some cases. I don't know about that. Yeah. I was, I was uh, far more excited about the Merriam-Webster yeah. announcement <laughs> okay. because that, that is, um, I just, I had no idea until this morning yeah. and it is, I think it's great because um, it's, we, we, you know, I'll get into this more later, Merriam-Webster will come up because they are, as Peter said when he came up to the podium mm -hmm. during that talk, um, you know, they're continuously updated, and so it's yeah. it's up up to date. And if you look if you look up a term, and uh, you, well, you're seeing um, the latest lexicographer, you right. know, le lexicography, right. and they're doing the work, a lot of the work for you. Yeah, it seems so like it's it great. Was, yeah, it seems like it's something that's been coming and. Um, Finally, they were able to make that transition, and I, th I think it's pretty healthy, yeah. too. Um, so all right, the first, I, we, and we should really get in, we get off AP, start talking about Chicago. We only have an hour to get through everything. We want to take some questions that you can put in Whova. Um, but my first question, first thing I want to know is, actually, the first question I had in my mind is, uh, what's, what are they going to do with the cover? And, you know, you know that's, <laughs> this has got to go on my shelf with all the other Chicago manuals. Um, and then the second one is uh, is the, um, the, the the dateline, so the, the the city of publication. For, ah, yeah. Well, yeah. you'll find out probably about the cover. So everybody, okay. stick around okay. um, cause, <laughs> because you'll um, we have you know we have something to show. I, I, I would guess. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as far as place of publication, um, as many of you may know, when citing a, a book. 
um, the style going back to 1906 has been mm -hmm. to um, include the place of publication, which means usually um, the city of publication, and um, most often and traditionally listed on the title page, below the title at the bottom of the page. And that uh, has been dropped as a requirement in um, several style books now, APA, AMA. Um, and yes, we are doing the same thing. <laughs> Because, you know, this, the, these examples, um, ignore the second example. That's, it, it's, it may be an important example, but the, f the first one is the more important one. There's no place before Pantheon Books. Anybody guess where that is? <laughs> uh, I wonder. It's, of course, it's New York, and, and that's like, one, one of the reasons of dropping it is because it's always New York, New York, New York, New York, <laughs> New York. And like, oh, and then, um, oh, University of California Press, that's... Oakland now, not Berkeley. <laughs> uh, does that matter? Um, that sort of thing. And uh, you know, so it's, it's a relief. You don't, really, you don't really need that in order to understand the citation, understand exactly which book is being talked about. There are rare cases, though, and I'm not really sure this, this one. I, the reason I, I chose this example because you have an Irish writer mm -hmm. um, condensing a Greek classic down to <laughs> one day. Um, and. Uh, being published by Shakespeare and Company, yeah, um, and and it's like, well, not everybody is going to know um, that that isn't all uh, across the channel, you know, or northward. Um, right. So adding Paris is like a little reminder, and also because you might want to um, you might want to cite um, the the London. Uh, printing through uh, um, publication through Egoist Press, which came out later in the same year. Right. Um, but that also that's complicated though because that one on the title page li also lists Paris because they had to, you know. So, right. um, and but Pantheon uh, Books may have their own uh, version of it too that you might want to cite. And then, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But the reason why I'm showing it is because yes, if you do need to do it, it is still city colon and then okay. publisher. Okay, so but you don't have to. You do it if you. No, and we actually would thing. prefer that you not. Yeah. We being copy editors, like yeah. please, please don't, because then we're going to have to look <laughs> look it up, and then we're going to have to query it. But no, we'll, we, it's a, it's allowed. Right. It's allowed. All right. So so what um, so what beyond that? That's that's. I mean, I don't. I try. I, mean, I don't deal with citations if I don't have to. Um, so it's not really like a big impact. But what what is what do you what is your favorite or biggest change in the book this year? Well, it's not a favorite, and it's it's um, necessarily, but it is, it, and it's not like a big single change. It's okay. kind of um, a set of changes here and there that reflect um, uh, the fact that copy editors now it's not 1950. Um, the editorial principles are all very important, but every copy editor I've, I've know these days, uh, the the job is looking things up. The job is being online and looking things up. So um, this doesn't have much to do with that, but it's getting there. Capitalization is, is a thing that if you have principle for capitalization and you say, okay, this such and such a word is always lowercase because it's not literal, whatever, um, but you go, uh, you're online and you're looking, but everybody's capitalizing it. What's yeah. the, you know, it goes against the principle, what do I do? So we've made adjust, it's basically some adjustments. Um, first, we're calling it title case for um, titles of books and um, title, well, titles of companies like, or organizations, University of Chicago, that's title case. Mm -hmm. And that is not related to the point I was just making about looking things up. Yeah. This is an editorial principle. Um, we've changed it to um, say title case because um, Titles are in the, that are mentioned in text, English language anyway, are always the important words capitalized. Whereas right. a headline, AP style, is to capitalize it like a sentence. Right. So you say it's a headline style. You're like, you mean like a sentence? Yeah. No. Sentence. Title yeah, sentence style. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we it's, right. So it was always headline style, sentence style in Chicago for years, decades, editions, mm -hmm. and now we're just saying it's title case and sentence case. Just to make, you know, case from uppercase and lowercase where the letters were grabbed by the printers before, you know, the days right. of movable type. So um, this is the, the first big change related to that, though. Um, a Room with a View, um, Ann Forster novel, um, I think. Uh, <laughs> it's been years since I yeah. read it. Um, lowercase w, because with is a preposition. It's not important. And it's only four letters. I know AP style would capitalize that. Okay, 
Um, we went uh, around and around with lots of people weighing in on this and came to a decision to capitalize prepositions of five letters or more. I know that's arbitrary. Um, another style that does, and it's arbitrary because it doesn't really matter to the reader. Right. It, it matters to um, editors because they're, they're working fast and have to make decisions. And if you say, oh, no, no, about is five letters, capital, move on. Um, mm -hmm. Also, and All About Eve, Eve is the movie from 1950 with Betty Davis. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's based on a book called All About Eve, but that would be, um, you know, this title case preposition prepositions of five letters or more applies to any title mm -hmm. or name of an organization or whatever. And words like within, they tend to get really long through. Yeah. And we were lower casing those which seemed to be going against yeah. the tide. Just kept going against the tide. And then I think things went really off the rails in 1969. Um, <laughs> because I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> For, for 11 editions, the Manual of Style from 1906 through 1949, and then the print, so, you know, printings all the way up to 1969 said, um, you know, prepositions are lowercase, but didn't specify, and all the examples were short, like mm -hmm. of. Yeah. You know? okay. So you're like, okay, so the 12th edition said, regardless of length. Then you would see, in, as examples in the manual, um, the gospel according to Matthew, and according to is a uh, preposition, it's, it's a um, phrasal preposition. So that was all lower, lowercase. Oh. And that's like, well, that's a lot of word, a lot of letters to lowercase. And then, you know, later on when uh, um, in the secular world, um, mm -hmm. the world according to GARP, same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so according has to, has to be capitalized. It has yeah. to be. And then it went to, okay, what, 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 if, what will you find when you go on, online, when you're looking these things up? And I know I hate to say it, but this is this is I don't hate to say it really. It's only because of the, you know, 23 uh, years ago when uh, Wikipedia launched or whenever it was. Um, yeah, don't use that as a resource. Never use you know all that. But if you, um, they're very good with titles um, and yeah. especially things that are the entry term. Mm -hmm. So if you look about uh, up all about Eve or Room of the View or Chicago Manual Style or whatever, um, they. Uh, their um, policy is, is five letters or more, um, and oh, did it it, well, that's, I, I didn't, I, I looked at many hundreds of titles, it, it must be their policy. I didn't see it in the Wikipedia manual style, but yeah. it's just one place, it's other places, because you know, right. the metadata for titles go in, to, like to Amazon, and, mm -hmm. um, and they get changed by different companies, different publishers anyway. Yeah. Um, so you don't have a lot of control over your title once it gets out into the world. Um, if your mm -hmm. book is being published and it's mentioned by the New York Times, you have no control. You're, it's gonna, <laughs> you know. So we just thought, okay, let's do this because th this is um, something that could be applied easily, and it's what you're going to see out in the world. And lowercase with just for book titles, and maybe because the, the tradition has been, or the convention for Chicago book, which is big with book publishing, mm -hmm. has been to, to use lowercase for regardless of length. Let's just keep those four letters lowercase because, because with and from, you know, in a title, mm -hmm. it needs to be lower. So that's, that, that's, the big, that's the big change, okay. I think. And not everyone will like it, um, <laughs> I, but I hope, it, uh, I hope it'll make sense when, when you know, cop, during copy editing. Mm -hmm. Was there, was there a big vote in the office over four letters, five letters? There were, there were votes in um, word comments, yeah. <laughs> you know, documents that circulating, and it's like, okay, let's tabulate. Okay, what are the numbers now? <laughs> Who, who's winning? Um, yeah, it, it, it was months and months. Okay. So that, this, this was one of the changes I was most nervous about. Right. So, ah. so, um, so let me get into another capitalization question, and, and you, you called me out for... Uh, I think in an in email that went out uh, about this, or maybe it was on the website, uh, capitalization of the in the Chicago Manual of Style. And I, when, I, when I worked in newspapers, it seemed that every newspaper had, they had a the in front of it, had a capital V for themselves, but everybody else was lowercase. Um, so, but, and actually I looked on the website, I, everybody needs an editor. I've got the capitalized in one place and lowercase in a different place. So what's... Uh, well. It's the rule for this for books has not changed at all. Um, okay. it, it's always, um, you know, check the title page or uh, I, 
the covers are more fun for this example. Mm -hmm. So, you know, H.G. Wells, uh, an 1897 science fiction novel, um, The Invisible Man, um, you know, and the, the, the makes sense because it's like, this is the invisible man, this is a phenomenon mm -hmm. um, that you're gonna learn about. And um, then in, in later in 1952, in the United States, um, Ralph Ellison's um, novel came out, um, Invisible Man, not The Invisible Man, it's Invisible Man, and it's, I don't know, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know what was going through um, the author's heads, if they had any role in it, but we, we don't really ask that, we just say, well, what is the title? And, and so um, we do that now with periodicals because the New York Times um, has a capital T uh, in initial the, and the rule that's said since 1906 to um, use, you know, to, um, put it lowercase in Roman, um, that, you know, that was fine, but it went against um, what was preferred, and uh, a, a similar manual um, published by Oxford, Hart's, Hart's Rules, um, that one also started in development in the 1890s, and then the first edition for publication was, uh, came out in 1904, two years ahead of the first, um, uh, you know, Chicago manual style, which wasn't yet Chicago. That was right, the manual style. Yeah. I've got one of those on my shelf, a manual of style. Yeah, in the 1930s. The, and, and it didn't even have the uh yet. It was just manual of style. So, <laughs> um, so what what we uh, looked at was okay. What what do these publications do? And and here um, on this this screen, there's um, there's a an academic journal. Um, uh, American Journal of Sociology, there's no, no the, and then you see the AJ, AJS, the other is really small. Um, and another uh, similar publication is, um, but it's just academic, the, the Yale Review, see that T, it's a T-Y-R, the, you know, those are important. The New Yorker, when the New Yorker writes about itself, right. it always capitalizes. So, um, the Los Angeles Times, Chicago Tribune, no the, although in the 1870s, 80s, and 90s, I think the Chicago Chicago Tribune was experimenting with the, the. Mm. Um, but it's not that crucial to get that right, but we do want people to know that, yeah, the New York Times, the New Yorker, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, yes. Los Angeles Times already has a capital the, but it's LOS, so obviously it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> uh, it's not for the title, but it, so you do say the Los Angeles Times, but it's lowercase, otherwise it'd be the, the. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that's probably not why, but um, so we just, um, you know, we, we made a point of, of, of saying what's the accurate way to do it. Mm -hmm. And other manuals have, have said, you know, words into type, the very last edition when, that, when uh, 1974, third Same edition, um, it said, get the title right and, and including the the, we know it's difficult. <laughs> and, and if there are a ton of them, uh, that I'll then, then just lowercase it. So I like style guides that are understanding about a copy of the group. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But, you know, the New York Times, but it's not, not always going to be. Uh, not a the New York Times. Article. No, no, because <laughs> syntax turns it into yeah. an attributive. And you could say, is that the New Yorker, I mean, sorry, the New, or New Yorker, is that the New York Times article you're talking about? And that the would be lowercase in Roman mm -hmm. because it's part of the surrounding text. And if you say, is that the Times article? Lowercase t, but not for the Times UK, which right. I, I mentioned Hart's Rules because in 1912, I don't have another edition to refer to. It may have been also earlier than that. Um, they said lowercase the the except in the times because they prefer it that way. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, this, is, and, this is London in the early 20th century. So yeah, yeah, and so, so what, about, what about The Guardian, The Observer, uh, you know, um, The Economist? I think The Economist was the next one Hart's Rules led into, they prefer it that way. <laughs> okay, so it just became difficult to knowing what the publications prefer, and we have 50 journals published at the University of Chicago Press, and each one of them has an about page, and if it's The American Naturalist, that's a capital T italic, the, with the American naturalist. Mm. Um, that, so the publishers care, usually, sure. about their title. Not always, but mm -hmm. so we're like, well, what's the right answer? And we're trying mm -hmm. to, to, you know, we'll try to help with that. 
I'm working on developing, I've been working with Perfected on developing a, a list of um, newspaper titles and, you know, this kind of, it's, 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 de it's yeah. de in development. I'm not sure it's possible to check for that. But again, it's not that important except for right. this is permission to, to capitalize the though with, with um, titles that we know include it. Right. So, Don, did you just uh, reveal that the answer to the question I have? Is, is, is there going to be a Perfected update for the... 18th edition. Yeah, sorry to jump ahead on that. Right. Um, <laughs> I often think of Perfected when I'm doing this stuff because um, having to put the rules in, it, you know, into uh, a check that the computer does um, clarifies a lot of things. Oh, right. Yeah, and, yeah. and there, there, there will be a um, CMOS 18 update um, for Perfected. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> Perfected users. I don't, I, and people may not realize, and, and uh, Russell was on uh, that word chat um, with Danny Human when it was announced, and the thing I didn't realize till that point, I just assumed that this is the tech guys from uh, Perfected are the ones who sort of built that, but Russell actually is the one who went in and built that sort of uh, the, the Chicago Manual style presence in, in Perfected. With Daniel, you know, yeah, back, we share, share every decision <laughs> back and forth, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah excellent, so, all right. So are you more, uh, more capitalization or is that? Uh, uh, no, uh, yes, um, you're off the hook with citation, citations mm -hmm. and um, index entries. Um, the, oh. uh, you know, I think we say um, we support dropping the initial article in the titles of periodicals in those two contexts, mm. um, simplifying things and also um, easing the transition. You, you, if this is the transition, maybe people will always want to do it this way in source citations, and maybe some people won't. You know, I've seen books from Ram Random House that successfully uh, um, do this, dro successfully drop mm. all in the index, and, and I, there's a book called uh, a biography of Einstein, I could get into that, that's really well, well edited, that, um, not Einstein, um, Thomas Edison. Oh. It's, it's reverse chronological order, um, and mm. it's a re really well done book just from a few years ago. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's, it, there may be a couple more capitalization things. Yes, um, French fries ah. and French dressing, and that, that should um, make, you know, copy editors a little, some of us, like, isn't that inconsistent? Sure. Um, but this is where um, Miriam Webster comes in because if you, if you wonder, the first, the, the, the way I, I, this started was looking at Roman numerals and Arab, Arabic numerals in the manual, lowercase r, lowercase a. I'm like, okay, and that's part of our rule. If it's not literal, these, these um, numerals you know, the I, 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 and, you know, yeah. Roman numerals. If they're not literally Roman, are they? So lower, lowercase r, and the numbers, one, two, three, you know, the, um, the Arabic numerals, they're not literally Arabic, so lowercase a, right? Mm -hmm. I looked right. into that. No, everybody's capitalizing Roman and Arabic in that context, and I'm thinking, okay, that's something. If everybody is doing that and we're saying not to, let's look how that happened. And that was another 1969 thing. In 1969, the editors apparently said, well, italic is lowercase. It still is, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and Roman type is lowercase because it's Roman as opposed to italic. So you have upright yeah. versus oblique, right. and those are not literal. And you do capitalize italic. Merriam-Webster will tell you this because it's, it's an up-to-date, this is how the words are used. Um, if you're talking about um, things related to ancient uh, Italy, um, that region, um, then that meaning of italic would be capitalized, uh, but not with type. Right. So the numerals are a little different because the word is still Italian. And the thing is, I guess people just don't want a lowercase Italian. Why would you, you know, why would you do that? And, and it's not though, it's, it's, it's um, you know, it's Roman numerals and Arabic. Arabic, same thing, the Arabic, you don't lowercase that, it's a proper, mm -hmm. proper adjective. Hmm. You know, whereas italic is far enough removed, we don't know it's a proper adjective. And then French fries is the, the one I love because that's basically split. Some people capitalize it, some people don't. If you do an engram, you'll see some, you know, uh, a mix of very, very, you know, Google Books engram. So right. what's been published and probably mostly edited since um, yeah, I could go back to 1800, but right, there weren't French right. fries and whatever. No, French fries, yeah. <laughs> not for French fries. But, but yeah. Miriam Webster will say French fries is lower, lowercase, it's entered as lowercase f, um, also 
French fries, capital, also capital. They're also, mm -hmm. um, not also, I'm sorry, or, because it's an equal variant. Oh. It's, it's split, but, right. so now we say, if it's entered as lowercase in Merriam-Webster, even if it says often capitalized, or even mm -hmm. if there's an equal variant, mm -hmm. you can just go with that one, because um, that one is, you know, that's a, the first one. The first one, the first yeah, listed yeah, thing. Yeah. If even you look if up, they, even if it's equal, it's still the first. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. And if you look up French dressing, mm -hmm. there isn't even an option to lowercase f. It's almost embarrassing that French was lowercase with in the context of dressing in in the manual for so long, <laughs> because nobody was doing that. Mm -hmm. Because you have French, Italian, Russian. You know, words yeah. that are we just see right. um, capitalized. So yeah, Russian, that, Russian. That's, the, that's a big change, but it's not, there is adjustments. Because if you're looking up any of these words, mm -hmm. um, you'll find what you find, make your decision and move on. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We list a, a bunch of them, but not too many, so. Okay, are we done with the capitalization? I wonder. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, one yeah. more. Um, right. And this is, this is um, our, our rule for um, capitalizing after a colon was. Um, oh yes. Capitalize the, the first word, um, the, the first letter, the first word. Um, if it's one, if it's, a, if it's a full sentence and there are other sentences also, you know, if it's a series of, of two or more sentences being uh -huh. set off by the colon. And that is, it is a bit fussy. So um, uh, drawing on the wisdom of, of um, Random House copy editor, now retired, Benjamin Dreyer, mm -hmm. um, the idea was, well, signal to readers that you, you're starting a new sentence. So if it's a um, grammatically complete sentence after the colon, you can capitalize it. It's, ah. And if it's not, mm -hmm. it so, yeah. <laughs> and that, I think, is capitalization. I yeah. don't think there's another one. All right. Well, let's go. Let's. Um, we, we got. If you put a question, Hoover will try to get to. We might not get to all of them, and we're also taking questions from our Zoom viewers. We have a couple of questions from Hoover. The first one is: Will there be changes to the spacing of numerals and abbreviations, 10.58 and 10.49, to follow SI style of adding a space before the degree symbol and abbreviation? AMA made this change in their 11th edition. Oh, so like oh, Celsius. Yeah, like degrees yeah, Celsius, degrees, Celsius, degrees yeah. Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. The answer is no. Uh -huh. um, and because, uh, well, it's a very interesting question. If you look in the ninth, the latest ninth edition of um, SI brochure, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is, System International, the French, it's published simultaneously in French and English. The French um, version for forever was the version of record, but I, now I think it's both are the version of record. The, the, and and the, you can get a PDF free, um, just look at it or download it. And in that, um, th they specify, um, you know, the little circle degree, mm -hmm. and then like a capital C, that is a unit, so right. like a unit measurement. So like mm for uh, millimeters, mm -hmm. it's um, like the numeral two space right. uh, degree, degree C. Celsius. Okay, but not if it's like plane angles. So the degree symbol is then closed up to the number. Yeah. And that is just a little too, um, well, also the SI brochure says, um, and don't spell out percent, and percent is two words to this day in the, in the <laughs> SI brochure. I think because in French it's pour cent, P-O-U-R space C-E-N-T. So that is, um, I think, a Frenchism that is lingering. Uh, it, it seems like it's, it's a, in the scientific com community you see that, but I, I read it as 10 degrees and then Fahrenheit or something. Yes, and, and that in, in the early editions of the manual, I think it first snuck in, in one of the, it's not in the very first edition, I, I remember looking for this huh. degree symbol. Huh. Um, it may have made it in some time, maybe the fourth edition or something around there, but it was like 10 degree, closed up to the, the zero in the 10, mm -hmm. space, capital C, yes, and it was Celsius, I'm pretty sure, period, because Mm -hmm. You know, there were initial, periods were very big with initials um, back in the, in the, at the beginning of the 20th century. So there's been a progression where that thing has moved, the, the C moved to the degree. And then, yes, I think for the 16th edition, um, the first one I worked on in 2010, I added like a little, this is SI usage, 
including for the percent symbol, which AMA did not change. Mm. So I think, I'm pretty sure, AMA still says close up percent, um, the percent symbol to the numeral. I, this, the I CSE so, yeah. manual, which is the new version of scientific style and format, does, does that. Um, the percent symbol is still clo close up to the, to the numeral, but um, degree Celsius isn't. And I know that bothers some people, but if you're, um, you're writing for a general audience, it's like you say, yeah. you're not, just not used to seeing it. So right. not yet, maybe someday. Right, okay. What else do we have there? Uh, We've there? got a question from Whova. Will Chicago have clear guidance about capitalizing white? It's a good question. Um, that, was, um, that was clarified a little bit um, between editions. Right. Yeah, when, uh, when we announced, along with a lot of other yeah. um, publications and, and style guides, that the word black, when it referred to people, would be capitalized. Mm -hmm. And then I think a AP um, was working out like what to do and eventually settled on capitalized black but not white. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, um, in like, let's say APA style, um, that's so, you know. You're already white capitalized. Yeah, because it's like a census category to APA editing yeah. begins with. And so I think um, now, yeah, it's more common to do it in, in the very literal sciences, social sciences. Mm -hmm. um, but then out in the world, um, it's more like, well, what if we said you, you, you have to capitalize white? Like, that's the rule? Mm -hmm. um, that wouldn't sit well with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But it might it be just fine. Pers personally, um, I think, you know, it's the, it's what I would call a, um, it's a semantic decision, a distinction is made. You, you look at like a Subaru and you say that's a white Subaru, that's a black Subaru. Those are lower case. But if you're talking about people, yeah. you, you're talking about something that's more identity. And right. um, if you say that somebody is, is American, it's capital A and then it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a com complicated thing. So clearer advice, we support capitalizing indigenous, black, white, um, when they refer to people, um, mm -hmm. because, because, and this is back to Merriam-Webster, that's where things have gone. Yeah. So in Merriam-Webster, if you look up black, it'll, the entry is capital B, and it'll say, or less commonly, black, lowercase b. Right. And then if you look up um, indigenous, it'll say, um, you know, the entry word for people will be capital, and then it'll be, or less commonly, I'm pretty sure for that one too. And if you look up white, it's the opposite. It'll be lowercase entry term, um, or less commonly capitalized white. Mm -hmm. So there's, that, may reflect, that may reflect the sources being influenced by AP style. Um, right. I don't and know. And all the other newspapers at the, yeah. Yeah. To that. Um, Oh, lost my train of thought. Um, the, the, well, when you when you did that, it was after so it was after the, the uh, George Floyd um, uh, the the demonstrations and and, and it, there kind of became this groundswell of awareness that you know we ought to be uh, capitalizing uh, black as racial designation. But you had it wasn't that long after the the seventeenth edition was out, and you don't. I mean, you're not like AP where you update on the website or you change immediately. And was this, I think this is the first time you'd ever gone between editions and made a change. Yes, we've, we, made a we made a clarification because yeah. the, the existing rule was to go with the author's preference if lowercase wasn't what the author wanted. Uh -huh. Now, now um, we haven't moved much on it, but we wanted to clarify that um, right. we, are, we, are, we are changing what our um, editorial um, preference would be right so so did you I, I, I actually I don't know this do you um, do you update between do you do printings of the book and did you do any update like to do a new printing during that time or yes that um, and that's uh, you know there aren't a lot of printings of the manual not dozens mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think that might have I, I don't know I would have to check it might have made it a third printing been, yeah. um, but we do our policy is because our, we're, we're not AP style book and we're not a dictionary. So we're, we're much more focused on principles. And that's why, you know, like even with um, terms like black and white, it's the semantic, print, uh, you know, distinction of what, what does it mean to capitalize it? That's what's important to us, not necessarily um, 
now we're doing this because the world is doing, you know, that as often it's more like we, we want to lay down the principles for how um, editors um, can think about each one of these things and this is, the, this is our preference, this is the decision and we think that those can stand for seven years <laughs> and, and so we don't, we, we try to get that down and not, we don't have current events, we don't tell you um, avoid using this term because, I mean, we leave that to the dictionaries to, to, to label the terms, we, you know, the AP coverage, I completely agree with um, uh, whoever says you, you should have more than one style book, you should have more yeah. than one style book. Yeah. So if you're, if, if, you have the, if you're following Chicago style, have AP style book nearby mm -hmm. because there may be something that comes up and you'll say, well, that's not really Chicago territory, that's more AP territory. Right. So, right. Yeah, right. so we, we don't, we, don't um, we try not to update between, but we do make corrections and um, we make the corrections online as soon as we find them if there's an error. Mm -hmm. And we are, um, this time around, we're considering having some sort of way to check what's been corrected. Online oh, also. interesting. Yeah, because yeah, I think idea. people, I think people want that. Yeah, to see. No, I, 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 yeah, I, I would want it. Yeah, when AP added sort of this is the change, this is the date. That was so. That's very useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. So, Heather, what's up next? So we do have a question from Hoova. It is: Will Chicago be revising its guidance, such as in 5.48 and 5.256, to be more flexible and accommodating about the singular they? informal writing? That's a good question. And the answer is oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, I'm glad that the question included informal writing. One of the things about doing a style book that, that just becomes evident, whenever examples are needed, um, and there isn't a good one out in the world, and you need to invent one. Um, well, you. See, I'm now I'm using this generic you. I could say whenever, <laughs> they, whenever the uh, person, whenever they do this, um, <laughs> the, it's so much more fun and also often more instructive to do an informal example, because mm -hmm. informal language works like formal language. It has it's following rules and and all that. So, you know, somebody forgot their coat um, in 1950. Um, there would be people sneering at you mm. for saying that. Somebody forgot their, their coat? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, you know, what, be more precise. What, what's going on? There is plural. Mm -hmm. somebody, is, somebody is in the room. Somebody is singular. So there can't match up with it. But for indefinite pronouns like somebody, everyone, um, whoever, um, that's fine. And that makes its way into formal writing more often than, than I thought. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a very similar, will the driver of the yellow sedan please move their car? Mm -hmm. um, that's a completely natural in conversation. And right. it's also, it makes a lot of sense. What else would you put there? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we used to do his or her, but why, why go to the trouble to specify like, like that? I mean, it's, there is, the, that's what people are gonna say and very often, um, what people say over and over and over again, they're saying it because that's the clearest way to do it. That's the most efficient way to do it. This is how we understand each other. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like um, frequently updated dictionaries because they're just, if there's a new understanding about a word, it makes it into the, into the dictionary, uh, a dictionary like Merriam-Webster, practically no other in English. Um, OED well, does a very good job at that too, uh -huh. by the way. Right. Um, uh, so, yeah, and then um, the author wants their privacy protected. That's more of like, um, um, a med that could be also like a medical um, setting if you're reporting on um, patient studies and things. There, there are right. times where you, you know, there is good because it could apply to absolutely anyone for any reason. Right. So yeah, that's, that's where we're moving. Yeah. We've, we've moved there. Yeah, it's, I, and you know, it's, it's, I mean, I, I support that just because it's natural. Um, and there was like a period where as, as an editor, you're saying, uh, you know, I'm being hired to, to change this for somebody. And you do these, what Bill Walsh called, you know, backflips to, mm -hmm. to get it in there. He or, you know, I do he or she, do, and you rewrite the sentence, but uh, it's so, it feels so good just to say right there, even in formal situations and not worry about it. 
Yeah, and definitely. So the, and this, this has been something that's come, been coming a long time. I recently was looking at um, archival material for um, development of the manual style. Don't ask me why. I'm not writing a book on it or anything. I'm not. Um, but, but, uh, <laughs> you should. <laughs> um, th this, uh, um, one, of, one of the um, revisers from a, a few decades ago, Catherine Siebold, I think, Catherine Siebold, um, made an interesting comment in a talk uh, where um, she acknowledged that um, the women's movement, I think is how she put it, in the 1970s occasioned some changes for the 13th edition, which came out in 1982. And that, in uh, included um, the idea, well, you can't be so, all, all the examples were male, I mean, it can't be, it can't be like that, it's, it's just, it's sexist, it's not, it's not, uh, so, so how do we, you know, how do we fix that, but how do we fix that in the environment in 1980 when there's still a lot of people who are not going to accept it, and her answer was, well, we used a lot of plurals, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, yeah, um, right. Uh, just change everything to the plural, and you. <laughs> right. Well, and I think she meant so we could use there. Right. Right. And not not have to use singular there, though. Yeah. So right. authors want, their, but that wouldn't make sense in that. You know, um, some people forgot their right. coat. I don't know their coats. Oh, and that was also addressed. The distributive plural yes. is now. Uh, there's a little section on paragraph on that in the grammar chapter. You know, oh. is it somebody, is it people, um, people need to wear their watches mm -hmm. or people need to wear their watch? How does, how does that work? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. All right, so singular there, what else? Uh, I think we have some more changes to get through. Right? Yeah, um, dot, 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 we, we do. Um, that was a good segue that, uh, um, because <laughs> the, the, the ellipsis, and those are ellipses, I know they're squares. Um, that's because, <laughs> The, the font, the, well, the, the dot in the lower right-hand corner, this is a, um, uh, one of those preloaded PowerPoint um, designs, and I, I kind of, I liked it, so I stuck with it, but um, the font, which I think is called Rockwell, um, has square periods. That top one is um, a Chicago-style ellipsis, but not, okay. not like a typical published version. The typical published version would have um, dot, and then Unicode 2009 dot, Unicode 2009 dot. In other words, thin spaces, okay, right, to hold yeah. it together. Not every typesetter would do that, but instead of the non-breaking space, which is designed, although it doesn't work this way in all applications, but it certainly does in HTML, to, to expand like regular spaces with justified text. Mm -hmm. So um, putting in a, a, a fixed width space and then making it non-breaking, for example, in InDesign, you have to go to the trouble to have these nice spaced periods. Mm -hmm. So for this edition, we recognize that you have to go to the trouble. We haven't said now just use the Unicode character, the horizontal ellipsis, mm -hmm. 2026, I think, is a hexadecimal number. And it, that's the bottom one. It could be period, period, period also. That no works. Spaces. Yeah, and, and, it, and it varies by font and all that. But we recognize that um, uh, it's easier not to have to worry about a period going to the next line when you're writing, when you're writing yeah. and, and when you're editing. So um, you can use the ellipsis character and kind of like guidance on how to space punctuation words around that so that a copy editor or, uh, or a typesetter, whoever is doing it, can say, okay, well, we have to follow Chicago style. How do I do that efficiently? Um, so that you just replace all of the um, ellipsis um, you know, the horizontal uh, ellipsis glyph um, with three spaced periods. Yes, I, okay, I fully support that one. Okay, so um, hyphenation was, uh, Oh. yeah, and this, this, is, um, this isn't much of a change, um, and I, I'll wrap this up fast. It's okay. just that we're, we're recognizing that in some cases um, there will be, for example, compound nouns um, like guest room and like third floor, but not third floor, because third floor is an ordinal plus, plus a noun, and that, that's hyphenated according to the hyphenation guide in the, the Chicago manual style. So okay. um, first-rate novels are first-rate, though. That stays hyphenated after the noun because there are, because it is, I mean, and it's commonly done. We, we list, <laughs> well, we list them. Well, I know that comment was probably ill-advised, but. Um, <laughs> Ill-advised is also another one that would stay hyphenated. <laughs> and, and maybe because um, you're, you, the reader would say, uh, that comment was ill 
<laughs> you know, well, yeah. you want to see the unit, ill-advised. You don't want to read the word ill. Uh, yeah. Not that you would, but some people have different ways of reading text. Um, and then if, if, you know, we have spare hyphenation, uh, we prefer spare hyphenation because we like to save um, people from unnecessary hyphens. And so if you say, well, <laughs> guest room access applies to the guest room, is there anything ambiguous about that first one without the hyphen? You know, there are editors who would want that hyphen, but guest room is an, it's a very established open compound. It's in Merriam-Webster. There's no mm -hmm. list thing there that says adjective and then with a hyphen. Um, some, some compounds will have that. Mm -hmm. um, this is that's similar to um, also to high school and, you know, high school students. There's not much danger, even with all the increase in vaping and all that, that you're going to think that it's high, high school, school students. Student. Yeah. Besides, what is a, what is a school student? Yeah. You know, you don't say, hey, look at that school student. Right. Must be high. Right. It's high school student. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's just more clarification around, around the hyphenation issues. And because mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, can I keep that hyphenated or do I have to have that hyphen? We try to be clear. And, and I know that it's not going to be crystal clear still. That's, hyphenation is, is a vec, you know, vexing issue. And I know that it copy is. editors will it say, is. I spend all my time on hyphens. And, yeah. you know, so <laughs> we try, try to um, just move that a little forward, a, a well, little I, more logic and more um, relying on um, Merriam-Webster. And yeah. at the same time, taking out the hyphen in uh, ebook and esports, yeah. adding that to email. So now there are three. And we did that because, you know, we're book publishers primarily at, you know, mm -hmm. Chicago, but also journal publishers. And that's, you know, so that's the way it's been going in esports because the gaming industry wants that. Yeah. And then, but it's still e-bike. This is a hyphenation question too. Do you, do you uh, recognize the hyphens? I can't quite see the Epstein oh, well, I'll tell bar. E Epstein bar virus. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And oh. so that's a, that's a, a long, uh, a longer, uh, <laughs> dash. Um, it's an N dash, and same thing with the Ollie Al Fraser match, because oh. um, those are two people, Epstein and Barr, two people mm -hmm. um, the virus is named for. Ollie Fraser is Muhammad Ali and Joe Fraser, and that was, um, uh, I, I forgot what it's called, the match of the century. The, um, Ali Fraser. It the was rumble in the... N uh, Manila. It was, yeah, it was one of those. One the, of those. The, the, there, there, it's more than one, I think. But, and, um, so an Ollie Fraser match, the first one I think was 1971. I'm not positive. But those are, are N dashes because those are two different people. Whereas um, Albers Schoenberg disease, uh, um, a, sort of a dense density, not it's the opposite of osteoporosis in a way. Um, mm -hmm. That one is, that's one person. Albert Schoenberg is, is the name of, of one person, um, you know, a, okay. uh, that the disease is named for, who, who studied it. So I know that that's a distinction. Many um, editors want more N, N dashes, and we keep pushing back and saying, but readers don't <laughs> care. Right. See, they that's <laughs> my, so, so my, my thing, I mean, AP has sort of lessened its sort of insistence on hyphenation, I mean, I forget the semicolon appreciation society, I think I'm going to start a hyphenation appreciation society, because I think they add clarity so much, and as a newspaper guy for most of my life, I didn't even know what an N-dash was. Yeah, and that's, a, you, if you start such a society, you should have a chapter which for, uh, for N-dashes, because yeah. that's, <laughs> you know, be, because editor, editors like it, and, and it's the idea, when, when you see an N-dash in, in something like this, or in a, in a, uh, next to an open compound, you can say, that's been copy edited. Somebody's, been, been, somebody's paid attention to this. Okay. And, and that, I love N-dashes for that, and if it were up to me, mm -hmm. the N-dash rules would be more expansive. Oh. Uh, so you, but <laughs> it's not it's not all up to me. Yeah. But now you 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 told me recently, I don't remember when we were talking about this, but you you told me uh, a little story that Chicago almost got rid of the end dash. Mm, that's a I, I did say that that was a bit of an exaggeration, okay. but a an, an influential managing editor uh -huh. floated the idea. Okay. Before the fifteenth edition, this is uh, this is great, um, uh, and I'm I'm not. Yes, I'm not going to um, go into <laughs> the details. Or, it, yeah. <laughs> but I thought it was a very smart thing to to do because if there's any, uh, there's no better way of um, clarifying how people feel about something um, than threatening to take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so when that happened, we were like, it, it was, you know, 
<laughs> we're coming together like you must retain them between numerals and then you know uh, it went, went from there and, and you know in number ranges like 5 to 10 or you know court decision of 6 to 3 or whatever right. so yeah that's um, that was and uh, dashes are, are fun okay. all right uh, we've got, uh, oh, we've got four more minutes. Let's, uh, let's end on time, but I do have some other, uh, I do have some questions. Um, one of them was, one of them was related to end dashes and maybe we've, maybe we've adjusted that subject, but I wonder when you are at a gathering, uh, walking the streets of Rochester, New York is, Ithaca. Do, do, Ithaca, sorry, yes. sorry. <laughs> uh, slightly smaller. Yeah. Uh, yes. So do people come up to you and ask you about end dashes and how to use them? And, no, because because um, nobody knows that I <laughs> I would know yeah, any such thing. thing. What about here at like an East of an editing conference? Um, nobody's uh, yeah. come up to me and asked me about N dashes yet. But uh, okay. this is only my sure. second uh, ACES, so and only my third uh, um, conference of any kind. <laughs> so um, it's not happened. But it would be fun if it did. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hit them up later. <laughs> Uh, you're going to be around for the uh, the banquet later, and um, yes, you'll be here for for Grant and Martha. Um, Definitely. So, uh, so one more question, I think, is the the, the I, I, I'm curious. So, you, we we made the change. You made the change after the last printing of the previous edition. Um, now we've got seven years. I don't know if there's anything that might you know who knows what controversial thing might come up. Um, is there, is there a vehicle for making a change? And I think the second question is, seven years from now, 2031, is there going to be a book version of the, of the manual? Yeah, okay. Um, as far as the, the changes, uh, again, the, the editorial policy is um, that we don't make um, mm -hmm. uh, stylistic policy changes or whatever between editions. So we, you know, that's our... It's our goal. Um, if something came up where, where we had to, um, we, uh, you know, we have the power to, um, on, on the online version, right. we could put it in an editor's note or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever is needed to, to alert people there, right. but that would only be for people who are subscribing um, and it, 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 not everybody would know about it. Shop um, talk. Column. Yeah, and the shop, yeah. shop talk, um, uh, we, we you know, could announce it there. Um, and uh, we try to put it in the Q&A right. because um, the Q&A is searchable along with the content of the manual and it will continue right. to be. So if you look, look up something um, and you look up a term and it, and it doesn't show up, like no, no hits, there are other tabs, depending on your subscription, whether it's institutional or individual. Mm -hmm. um, and you, if you, everybody though, every subscriber will see the, um, the shop talk ones uh, right. and the Q&A. Okay. So th those will be in there. So if we've talked about it or it'll announced there, it, yeah. it and, and you've put in a keyword that, you know, that makes sense, right. it'll, it'll show up. Okay, so 19th edition in uh, 2031? Yeah, I don't know. If we, if we do the seven uh, years or um, in uh, 2044, uh, if we do 20 years like we did between the 10th and, oh, no, really? no, was it the longest? Uh, no, between, I think, the longest might have been between the 11th and the 12th editions, 1949 to 1969. Oh, wow. So that, that was a period There's of... No wonder 69 was so random. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was a period of, of um, probably f uh, forced or um, fake stability within the United States. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but then, of course, all kinds of changes. I, yeah. I'm just saying yeah. that maybe 1950s, everything is settled. We don't, we don't need to change anything. And right, then, yeah. then the 60s come along. It's like, the no, 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 Chicago. we need to make... Um, so it's, it's, uh, it will, there will be a, a book, I think, again, though, because yeah. um, when, when I was working on the, the um, 16th edition, I was, that was when there was a lot of panic, because in 2007, the iPhone and the Kindle came out. Yeah. And we're like, oh boy, right. books, are books going to disappear? Mm -hmm. And that was, that was a big anxiety. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea, I guess, that it's, no, books are printed books. You know, they haven't gone away. And I'm very, very glad about that. Um, and, there, you know, and I don't, and and I don't, you know, I don't think every copy editor um, is going to want the printed book for a, a reference. But we we've always, you know, tried to make it the model book because it's a book about 
publish, you know, yeah, by editing yeah. all that. And so I think it's a beautiful book, and I think it's worth having, and all, and, all and, that. And speaking of which, we promised the big reveal for the of the new book, right? Oh, so, should we yeah. show? Oh, yeah, I think we. Okay. Can. <laughs> all one. right. I hope I hope it's on here. Heather is hoping we go back to orange. Orange? Yeah. yeah I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, it, well, I think that I think the cloth cover might. You know. Let's see. Let's see. So. There we go. Ah. <laughs> Not yet available. Yeah, this is, um, is this real or is this AI? <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little funky, doesn't it? Little, yeah, it yeah. might, it might be uh, a human uh, made, but um, not, not yeah. it's not the actual thing. There is. Oh, yeah. look at that, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you very much to Russell Harper. Thank you very much to the University of Chicago Press. Um, we'll be back on Tuesday. I'm going to rush home for the eclipse, and then we're going to do a show on Tuesday with Aaron Brenner. And uh, thank you very much, Russell Thank Harper. you, Mark. And, this has been uh, fun. Yeah, thank you. Now you can do that. Thanks. Lay him out. All right. Good job. That's fun. Look at that. Two of two. Oh, there's no sound. I wonder if they shut off the sound. <laughs>